Hey and welcome ladies and gentlemen, just a warning up front, some footage might be considered shocking to some people, but this video is not to make light of the situation and the historic events. This video might be demonetized, so if you want to support me financially, consider becoming one of my channel's members for 3 euros a month to keep this channel afloat. Another thing is that this video will be divided into two parts, this part will go from 1933 until the fall of Yugoslavia. Now without further ado, let's get going. Wars are always a shame to happen and most of the time they bring a lot of death and destruction to both countries. And today we're going to look at a war which had caused the most death and destruction in a very short amount of time, World War II. Once Hitler rose to power in 1933 there are only a few things that concerned him. And one of these things was to build a country which would be ready for war and the other thing was the extermination of minorities. Like Jews, homosexuals, gypsies people with disabilities, people with certain skin color. He did this by using so-called extermination camps under the name of rehabilitation camps. Germany was punished hard after World War I and this is one of the reasons the Nazis rose to power. Because of the Treaty of Versailles was an easy scapegoat to blame all their crises on. According to the Treaty of Versailles, Germany was only allowed to have an army of 100,000 men. It lost 13% of its territory and 10% of its population. They lost a bit to Denmark, they lost Danzig to Poland, they lost a little to Belgium, Czechoslovakia and Lithuania. France retook parts of Alsace and Lorraine after they lost it at the Prussian hands in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. In addition to that they also lost their islands in the Pacific Ocean, parts of China and their African colonies. As you can imagine this at the time was seen as a massive embarrassment for the German people. And this was also one of the big reasons Hitler was eventually elected along with reasons like the ongoing crises. Once he rose to power he started to violate the Treaty of Versailles. He started to expand the army, make tanks and create an entirely new air force. One of the big events after 1933 was the Night of the Long Knives. This was in 1934 when the SS, Gestapo and other groups were tasked by Hitler to perform a series of killings. These were mainly all political adversaries. This was supposedly to stop a potential coup d'etat led by Ernst Röhm and the SA. These killings lasted three days. Official numbers state that 85 people died during this, but it's estimated that over a thousand people died. In late 1935 the first real war started and this was actually the Italian conquest of the Abyssinian Empire also known as the Ethiopian Empire. This was a war to boost the country's prestige, after a humiliating defeat 40 years prior. This time they actually succeeded in conquering Ethiopia in a war which lasted 7 months. This was also to show what was about to come, with aerial bombardments, poison gas, flamethrowers and concentration camps being used. Coming to 1937 this year saw the start of the Second Sino-Japanese War. The war started due to a border clash between the Republic of China and the Japanese Empire exchanging fire at the Marco Polo Bridge at 1100 hours. The official reasons remains unknown but the incident started a new war between the Japanese and the Chinese which saw the worst of atrocities happen. For example the Nanjing massacre which killed between 200,000 and 400,000 people. All of this happened in a time span of one month. This included rape, pillaging, arson and murder of prisoners of war. Coming now to 1938 which in my opinion is the most eventful year leading up to World War II. The first major event in 1938 was the Anschluss of Austria on the 12th and 13th of March in 1938. This was when Austria was invaded without a single bullet being fired. Within weeks of these events, authorities started to round up social democrats, communists and other politically opposing parties and also the Austrian Jews. These were all sent to concentration camps. In the plebiscite which happened about a month later they said that 99.7% supposedly agreed with the annexation. However international reactions were very mixed. The Opisus did not think much of it at the time, thinking that it was fine because two German speaking countries unified. But people like Winston Churchill were outraged about the aggressive expansion of Germany saying that most Austrian people were opposed to the annexation. After this Germany wanted to have the Sudetenland. This is a part of Czechoslovakia where a lot of Germans lived so of course they would try to get that. The Treaty of Munich was an agreement between four of the five major powers in Europe. 
They agreed that Czechoslovakia should surrender the Sudetenland to Germany and this was to avoid a all-out war being waged across Europe again. However, this effectively made Czechoslovakia vulnerable to a German invasion because their greatest strength was given away, just like that. And lastly, in 1938, another event happened in Germany, and this was named the Night of the Broken Glass, somewhat less famous than the Night of the Long Knives, but still very important. Jewish homes, schools and 276 synagogues were destroyed and ransacked by sledgehammers and other tools. In the end, 7,000 businesses were destroyed and 30,000 people were arrested and sent to concentration camps. A lot of Jewish people also fled Germany. This event also triggered mass suicide, numbers estimated to be around 638 suicides. On the 22nd of March 1939, Lithuania caves and gives in to the German ultimatum. This resulted in the surrender of Memel, and most of the Lithuanian population and the Jewish Lithuanians fled the city before the Germans could take over, which is very reasonable. On the 24th of August that same year, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was signed. This was a non-aggression pact between the German Reich and the Soviet Union, and this was to avoid a two-front war. Shortly after this, on the 1st of September, Germany invaded Poland. Two days later, the UK and France both declared war on Germany after the British promised the Poles to safeguard them from only German aggression. And while 90% of the German aircraft was fighting in Poland, the French and British were cautious because they were too afraid of German aerial retaliation. Eventually, the French did to decide to attack, and this attack happened on the 7th of September. Even though the French enjoyed massive numerical advantage, they did not capture a lot of territory. And after the seemingly inevitable fall of Poland at the hands of both the Germans and the Soviets, who declared war on the Polish just two weeks after the Germans did, they decided to retreat to their original post near the Maginot Line. And the last major war which happened in 1939 was the attack from the Soviets on Finland, and this is also called the Winter War. During this war we saw history's most successful sniper take on hordes of Soviet troops. And even though the Soviets enjoyed a numerical superiority and eventually went on to win this war, it's hard to call it a Soviet victory. This is because the Soviets suffered five times the casualties during this short war coming in at about 350,000 wounded in action, missing in action or killed in action. After this war ended, it was quiet in Europe for the first time in months, but this peace in Europe would only last for 20 days, because on the 9th of April, Germany decided to declare war on Denmark and Norway. There wasn't a lot of resistance in Denmark, but in general there wasn't a lot they could do about the invasion, so they surrendered approximately 2 to 6 hours after the invasion. The Germans also invaded Norway and quickly occupied Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim and Narvik. And the Allies tried to help Norway by sending expeditionary forces to help them out. Meanwhile in the rest of Europe, Germany declared war on the Low Countries on the 10th of May 1940. The first one to fall of the three was Luxembourg which fell by the noon of the 10th of May and the second one to fall was the Netherlands. The Netherlands only lasted five days and surrendered after the bombing of their major city Rotterdam. Notable battles in the Netherlands were the Battle for the Afsluitdijk and the Battle for the Grebelini. The Battle for the Afsluitdijk was one of the few where the Netherlands was successfully able to defend. But they were overwhelmed at the Grebelini, resulting in a German victory there. And the last of the three low countries standing was Belgium. To beat France and Britain they needed to do some trickery. The reason they needed to do this was because in terms of manpower and equipment they were definitely outnumbered and here comes the Manstown plan into effect. This is to penetrate the Ardennes force with a lot of tanks and resources. This was because the Ardennes force was seen as naturally impenetrable. So they were only guarded by the French 2nd and 9th army, which was seen as 2nd rate. The idea was for Group A to go through the Ardennes and for Group B to perform a feint attack to lure the British and the French into Belgium to pin them down. And this worked like a charm, because the French with their 7th army and a lot of tanks and the British rushed in and got pinned down. Then they got forced back to Dunkirk and forced to escape. Only 10 days after the Battle of Dunkirk, Paris fell and on the 22nd of June 1940, France signed the armistice and capitulated on the 25th of June. In a mere couple of weeks, five countries capitulated to the Germans, one of which was an empire thought to be invincible. Several hundreds of thousands of people died and even more people tried to flee to avoid the fighting. But Germany was not done, they wanted to take Britain as well. 
The name for this operation was Sea Loa, also named the Battle of Britain. And on the 16th of July preparations for Operation Sea Loa started. They wanted to do an aerial and amphibious assault on the British mainland. But before they wanted to launch the invasion they needed to have full aerial superiority. Some said that it would take between 8 to 14 days after the start of the aerial assault for the troops to land. However Franz Halder said that it was not a good idea and that they might put the troops through a sausage machine. Even more difficulties would come when they also started to consider different landing techniques for each division's landing because of the different high water times. All these things would make a direct landing very risky so the focus was put on the Luftwaffe and the Kriegsmarine instead. And so it was, the Luftwaffe started targeting ports and foodstocks. The Battle of Britain started in early July 1940. On the 13th of August the Luftwaffe began a series of concentrated attacks known as Operation Eagle Attack. This was an attempt to destroy the RAF and have aerial superiority. This however did not go as they wanted. Yes, they did to destroy a lot and they were a great danger to the Royal Air Force. However, the change in objectives is according to some historians why the Germans lost any chance of the potential victory over the British as it allowed the RAF to recover. After this, Italy declared war on Greece and Greece lasted 5 months before eventually capitulating against the Axis powers. Of course Greece did not stand alone and they got help from Commonwealth nations but it's still an impressive feat nonetheless. During the later stages of the Greek Axis war, the Axis also declared war on Yugoslavia but they fell within 12 days. This is because a large portion of their army was ill equipped to fight a war from all sides. Anyway this was it for part 1, if you enjoyed it please make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel because 80% of you watching has not done that yet. If you want to support me by becoming a member of my channel, there's a link in the description. Also a thank you to VW German Looker Beetle and Sander for being already members of my channel. If you want to watch another video of mine, there will be one on the left of the screen and on the right of the screen you will find a playlist and in the middle you can find a button where you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Other than that, have a very very good day.